Hello, everyone. My guest today is Michael Ozopardi. He's the co-founder and CEO of employee development and e-learning company Sabazo. Since being set up in 2013, the company's software products helped develop upwards of 500,000 employees across 97 countries. Michael is currently focusing his attention on the company's latest product, Inform, a staff training tool for hospitality teams. Michael, are you ready to take us to the top? Hi, Nathan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I think I just lost it for a second. No, that's, we're back now. I'm that's good. okay. Thank you. So just be clear, you have two you have two products, Sabazo and Inform.io. Which one is the SaaS company? Inform is a SaaS company. So okay. Inform is uh, an employee development tool, which um, is basically aimed at the hospitality industry. It's kind of like the uh, greatest hits kind of a compilation of things that we've been working on uh, for the last kind of five years with Sabazo. Okay, so so I want to understand Sabazo and then inform. But so for, for Sabazo, help me understand what 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 that company does and why you made the decision to go full SaaS with Inform. So Sabazo is um, our first kind of like mother company. That's what we started. Seb and I, my business partner, about five years ago in London, and that's an employee development uh, software company. So we work with um, several kind of global hospitality companies, and we help them basically build custom software tools for them, to uh, for the managers and the HR people to train their global workforce. So. We kind of uh, equip them with the features and tools they need to to drive their workforce forward with everything they need uh, around the world. Um, so Sabazo is very much a traditional software company in the sense that we build the tools on project basis or license kind of basis. Um, and then Inform is the SaaS. Uh, so hold on, option. Michael, before we go to Inform. So Sabazo, um, what was the revenue model there? Were you basically taking a, a cut? Like, how'd you price it? So uh, we had two, we have two uh, ongoing uh, different uh, kind of like pricing models there. Project basis, so complete custom so- solution. So literally uh, specify as building software on specifications. Uh, and the other kind of thing we, we do Sabazo is licensing software out to companies. I see. Interesting. Okay. So just to understand kind of what you're moving away from, help me understand over the past 12 months, how much revenue did that company do? Just Sabazo. So um, with Sabazo, I'm not that prepared to kind of disclose that information. Uh, but we, what, what I will say, however, is we've built Sabazo from literally nothing five years ago to quite to a good, I would say, growth rate of upwards of 40% at the moment. We're trying to actually increase that up after five years. Um, and what we've done is we've decided, look, we said, okay, look, we have this wealth of information We have this customer base. We know a lot about the e-learning industry. We know a lot about the hospitality industry. So I said, what can we do to basically move into the products uh, space? So what we've done is we've grabbed, uh, we've basically literally saved up 200K uh, from Sabazzo and launched Inform using that that funding. So so Michael, I won't push you harder on this, but give me a a range. I mean, are we talking 5 million or less, 10 million or less? Generally speaking, how big was the prior company? No, no, it's 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 uh, it's at one million or less ARR okay. at the moment. Okay. The reason I ask that, uh, and I appreciate you being transparent. The reason I ask that is there are a lot of CEOs that get stuck with call it a million bucks in revenue, uh, but it doesn't scale, and they don't have the the guts to say we're pivoting. You have made the decision to pivot, so I want you to serve as an example to others. So, so you have this asset. It's it's high churn. It's per project, you know, less than a million per year. You're now using everything you've learned there, including the customer base, which is valuable. Save 200 grand in cash, so you're good on cash flow to put into Inform. So, what are you doing different with Inform? How's the revenue model work, and what are you going to deliver? So, with Inform, and it's very good that you mentioned. So, with Inform, what we've done, and the reason why we've done Inform now is because we believe that we can do a lot, a lot more with it. So. Um, the revenue model is the classic SaaS model, three tiers, three tier and two paid tiers. Um, it's aimed at small to medium sized enterprises, but what we want to do is want to deliver a full, a fully featured kind of one stop shop um, LMS solution to these enterprises. Hospitality enterprises, this is our niche product. Um, so the important thing there is a big challenge with the learning management systems, Nathan, is um, the idea of content, right? LMSs are abundantly available in the market. So what we decided to do was we said, look, let's build a great, a fantastic um, LMS solution, with which we've done, 
But we wanted to go a step further and wanted to solve the issue that many hospitality companies face every single day, and that's to generate really good, engaging, interesting content for their employees. Yeah, that the employees so will we, actually engage with. Absolutely. There's no, there's no reason to get to, to, to um, implement an LMS solution in an organization unless you have great content. So uh, what we've done is we've moved into the content space as well within Form, and we're going to provide our customers with kind of top-notch text and video based the courses that they will have access to as soon as they become paid members. Yeah, that's so there's great. a free tier where they can buy the courses and then there's a paid tier where they can full access to the courses. When did you launch the paid plans? We will, we're still building, we're still in beta phase at the moment. Okay, we're so pre-revenue on this company. Network. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, got it. Uh, that's great. Now, how many customers did you work with at Sabazo? Um, so with Sabazo, we've got uh, about 20 customers that are big, big, big clients of ours. We are basically their sole LMS supplier. These are global companies. So um, as you said earlier, different model. And, but they've basically provided us with um, a lot of what we needed to know to kind of move into the, yep. the market space. And besides the 200,000 bucks that you've saved up, I mean, has the company bootstrapped or have you raised capital? Totally bootstrapped, yeah, both both companies. That's great. And uh, how many folks on the team across both companies? In total, around fifteen people. We're, we're, we're uh, around we're ten people on Sabazo, and we're five on Inform as, as we speak. Okay, and you said that the whole company launched in twenty thirteen. Inform obviously launched here in twenty eighteen. Correct. Yes, correct. And and what is the um, you mentioned earlier trying to continue to improve Sabazo? Why not cut your safety nets? and go all in on Inform, force everybody on it? Why try and grow something that you know is not the future? Good question. So uh, firstly, there's a fair amount of ongoing um, projects and ongoing, let's say, legacy solutions, which we've built over the years. Those provide a fair amount of annual revenue for us, including you know, maintenance, uh, SLA agreements, and so on. That is the reason, because we've kind of like worked I think quite smart in that way. We've managed to generate enough um, capital and safety net for Inform. Yes, your question is valid. There could be a point at which that could, could happen, and we 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 do discuss this actually quite a lot. What what will happen if Inform is is you know hopefully kind of like goes the way we think it will go? Um, the, the answer is you know both companies are would be would be profitable why um you know wh wh why um, abandon the first the first company when we can have you know uh, potentially two leaderships for both and run them simultaneously yeah are they does sabazo are they the same cap table or are they two separate companies so um technically they they're, they're the same company the way we want to approach it is the atlassian side right so having the mother company with several products underneath yeah. So the way we see it in the next five years, Sabazo will be the mother company with several products underneath it. Yeah, but just to be clear, Atlassian, is, that's not a professional, it wasn't like a professional services agency brand that they kept to then house products underneath it. They're a kind of a multi, but they're all, they're all SaaS products, right? So the, I don't think that analogy holds for you. Sorry, I, I just lost you there. Can you just repeat the last I was just saying, last... I was just saying, comparing what you're trying to do to modeling Atlassian, I would say is not fair. I mean, they didn't have an agency model that they kept going just for the hell of it. You have an agency model, you want to keep going for the hell of it because it generates cash. So, so okay. Um, to clarify, we don't want to keep it going just to see where it goes. The plan for the next five years is to, is to transition fully into the product space. Got it. So... So we don't intend to let the, the Sabazo model go indefinitely. The, the plan is to transition fully into, into so, the product. So how do you shut it? So how do you shut it? When, when will you decide to move the rest of the employees fully off of Sabazo and into Inform? Well, at, at, so the current clients we are committed to keep and serving, you know, until, until we can. We, we're not going to, we're not going to, go anywhere close, uh, you know, stopping this prematurely. The, the reason is, as I said, there are long-term projects happening. Um, well, Michael, just to be clear though, you said you're not going to do this indefinitely. So what if a customer says, I want you to do this for the next decade? You're going to keep doing it for the next, I mean, I would consider that in our time frame indefinite. That's a good question. And the honest answer is we don't have a plan for that yet. I mean, the, um, the, the way we see it um, pan out is if, if that what would be the case, we definitely would need would need uh, a transitional plan of sorts. 
uh, as I said, we our relationship with our clients so far, you know, is um, kind of very important to what we're doing with Inform as well. So we're we're nowhere close to 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 kind of like severing any any of those ties or even um, stopping Sabato as the time as as a, as a time at the time because yeah. because this is this is um, a very important model that we've adopted to kind of sustain any projects that come up, that come in the future. Yeah, just to be clear, call it what it is: it's cash flow plus your learning about your customer base that you're going to ultimately eventually sell into Inform. Absolutely. And also the idea of bootstrapping with this model, um, I mean, I can highly recommend it because the reason is, as you said, you can, you, you, you can never, you can never buy resourcefulness. You know, um, the, the, what we've achieved, the seven, I and the whole team in, in five years working with these customers face to face is a tremendous amount of experience in the space. Yep. And I can't think of any way, any other way to kind of like get that uh, than to continue to have the relationship with the clients we have now. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Let's wrap up here, Michael, with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? <clears throat> oh, there are many. Um, I would say, I mean, may, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a business book. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's one of the books I've read really many times. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, yes, uh, I can't, the name escapes me, the CEO of Slack, I believe his surname is Butterfield. Yep, Stuart, Stuart, Butter- Stuart Butterfield. Number three, yes. what's your, uh, what billing tool do you use? Billing tool, uh, zero. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Between seven and eight. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Single, no kids. Okay. Um, and how old are you? 31. 31. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? What do I wish? Uh, so many things. Uh, I would say not to take things too seriously in the sense of uh, failing. Uh, just, just, just to look at it for what it is, which is a fantastic game, which to which is is made to just enjoy and uh, welcome failure a bit more. Guys, there you have it, Michael. Again, it's just a game. Go for it. Launched the company back five years ago. Grew the basically professional services business up to a million bucks in revenue. Then realized, you know what? We've got to transition this into a true SaaS company. They're doing that with a company called Inform, which will essentially help teams train their employees faster and a more and in a more engaging model. That pricing launches here at the end of 2018. They're pre-revenue today, funding it with 200,000 bucks they've saved up from the agency. So totally bootstrapped, which I love. Michael, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. Thanks for having me.